Hello everybody and welcome to the second part in in loading and uh, using alternate individual spread animation. Uh, so in the last tour where we left off is that we got the color of the indicator that we're trying to get and the pixel from the image that we're trying to um, we're locating from. So first of all what we need to do is at the bottom of our code here we're going to say last pixel is equal to pixel okay so what we're gonna do first of all if we look at our image our image right here so if we look at our image uh, th this red line can represent could represent like three different pixels right that look are bundled up together to look like they're one block of a one a one line block uh, the problem with this is that if we get one pixel and then we get a next red pixel it's gonna treat it like it's two different lines or two different indicators so we need to have a, some way to solve that uh, so the way to solve this is that we're saying we're gonna compare the first pixel with the second pixel if the first pixel if the pixel from this frame is equal to the pixel from last frame uh, then we don't want to do anything within that uh, we don't want to do anything you know, if they are different then we will compare them so what we're gonna do we're gonna use uh, the Allegro color class is, is a struct, so we can't directly compare uh, colors like things equal to whatever, right? So uh, what we can do is that we can just do memory compare. So we just do uh, ampersand pixel and we do ampersand last pixel. Okay, and the size is equal to size of an Allegro color. Okay, so then memory copy returns zero if they are equal or returns false if they're equal, but if they're not equal, then it returns a different value. So we just basically say that if it returns a different value other than zero, so if they are different, uh, then we want to continue on with our program. So then after that, if the last pixel is not equal to the current pixel, then uh then we want to compare the pixel with the color the color indicator so we're gonna say if memory compare uh, we say pixel and color and we do the size of Allegro color but we in this in this case we could say if it's equal to zero right here we could say if it's equal to zero or we could just say not so um, if you know like false is equal to zero and true is equal to one, so we just say that if it's not memory copy or whatever, so if it's equal to zero, then therefore they're equal. So if the pixel is equal to the color, then we want to continue with our program. So what we're going to do, we're going to do source dot push back and we're going to do I. So if it detects a red line, that means it's the start of a new image, okay? So that we're going to add one to source. So at first we said source equal to zero because the image starts, because the image starts at zero, and then the new image is going to start from here, and we're going to add another source for this line over here. Okay. So we're going to say that if source dot size is equal to two, uh, then we set width dot push back equal to i. Okay. So. Um, this is so the source dot size basically is a part of the vector uh, the vector class and the size will uh, say the size of the vector so so you have an array with two elements the size of that array is equal to two uh, if you have a source the, the vector the size of it is equal to two the amount of elements within the vector right uh, so in this case when we add uh, the we did push back our source of size is equal to one and after we do this the source is going to be equal to two so we say that if a source is equal to 2, then the width is equal to i. Uh, so that's basically saying the width of the first image is going to be equal to uh, this value over here. Okay. So we have to put an else. So else, so else if the size is greater than 2, then we will do, or if it's not equal to 2, then we do push back i subtract width, width dot size minus 1. So what is this saying right here? So once we get our new value, our new value right here, so we'll say it's a value, we say that uh, this value subtract the width of this image is going to give us this image, the, this image's width right here, 
Okay, so that is what it's essentially saying right there. And the reason why we do size minus 1 is because, like, if we do a raise, if the size of the array is 2, remember, a raise does the value 0. So if this size of this is, say, 2, if the size of, say, of the source is equal to, or, or the size of width is equal to 2, we do 2 minus 1, and that will give us the second element within, that, uh, within our vector. Okay? Uh, so that is it for that. So after this, we just want to put an else if i is equal to al get bitmap with, and we put in our player, uh, player minus one. Then we just set we do we do the same things. We can copy this right here. So this this block this block of code inside here only occurs if um, it detects a red line but if we look at the end of our image there is no red line indicating it so what we do is that we just set that um, our, our, Im our image width is going to be equal to the width of this last thing uh, now you might be saying it is uh, kind of uh, inaccurate in that we're saying the the players width subtract one so if you want you could say i plus one subtract to the width whatever blah 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 but it's really up to you uh how you want to handle it uh but that is it and make sure you have the last pixels equal to pixel at the bottom so we can um see what the pixel was at the last frame so we can compare them uh so now we're done that and there's two variables that we want to we're going to want to add we're going to want to add an image number and that's going to be equal to negative one and we want a boolean call start animation and we're going to set that equal to false uh so i've erased all the source um x and source y code over there uh so what i've added in the code is that i have another else if and if they press the a key a for animation and start animation equal to false then we set start animation equals to true okay so we're going to say if start animation uh, is equal to true then we do image number number plus plus so we save image number is greater than or equal to the source dot size uh, then we set image number to negative one and we set the start animation equals to false okay so at the bottom of our code here, what we're going to say is that we say if not start animation, uh, then we then we draw our whole image and else we do AL draw bitmap region. So we're going to draw the player. Uh, our source is going to be source image number. And our Y is going to be zero. Our our width is going to be equal to width image number and the height is going to be l get bitmap width no height sorry and our player and the x and y and we have our null okay uh, so if we run this program let's see what we get Uh, so we see the red lines here, and there's one area that we forgot um, to take it in our program. But if we click A, our animation happens. Now it's happening at the speed of light, and I know in in the next tutorial I'm going to be teaching you how to have multiple timers so you can regulate um, them. But our our animation is working smoothly. So one thing we need to add after we're done getting all the red line and stuff, we just need to do AL get no AL. Uh, what is a function again? Yeah, so al al convert mask to alpha. We put in our player, and we'll say al map rgba two fifty five zero zero two fifty five. Uh, so we mapped it. So then we got our animation done, and this is almost done. Uh, our tutorial is almost done. So one last thing that before we do anything, some of you might be tempted to do this. Like if image number is greater than size minus one, uh, then you, and you have else image number plus plus. The problem with this is that because image number is negative one and size returns an unsigned value, then you're going to run into a problem. 
once you convert a negative sign to an unsigned value, what it does to convert it, it sets the image number uh, to the u int max. So we'll set it to the max value of that. Um, since the image number is an integer type, say the maximum number an integer can be is 4,000. It will set image number to 4,000, subtract the absolute value of the number. So the absolute value of negative 1 is equal to 1. And so, like, the absolute value of negative 5 is equal to 5. It just returns a positive number of the negative number. So, basically, it will say that image number would be equal to 4,000 subtract 1, which would be equal to 3,999. And therefore, we run into problems because 3,999 is greater than the source of size. And therefore, it will return tr the statement true when it really isn't true. Uh, so, that is, I have a link in the description that will describe more in depth um the conversion between negative sign values and unsigned values and how it works uh but that's if you guys are interested in it so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial uh thanks for watching and bye